the cops. Worse, the police cops. This is the 13th episode of the 10th season of The Simpsons, titled Homer to the Max. It's about a fictional TV show airing in Springfield called Police Cops, a parody of Miami Vice that stars a heroic character named Homer Simpson. Our Homer Simpson loves it because he shares the same name as this character and in turn receives a ton of attention. But then Police Cops rewrites their Homer, turning him into an inept imbecile. And the Homer Simpson we know hates the change. So much so that our Homer changes his name to Homer Sim uh, Max Power to try to become someone else and takes on a new identity to escape being associated with this fictional idiot. It plays like a critique on bad character development. It also, maybe accidentally, is a very meta look at what happened to Homer Simpson. Relax. What is mind? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. <laughs> Homer has changed. Let's start with the design as it's the simplest and least dramatic of the changes. This is how the Simpsons characters were originally imagined by Matt Gronick, as silhouettes. He wanted the characters to be recognizable by shape only. He succeeded. Homer's original design is here. His features are sharper, he has constantly visible eyebrows and a sharper mouth. While cartoony, he carries the features of something recognizable to a human being. But almost immediately, Homer begins to change. Now, while I think the design changes for the better, it's also kind of foreshadowing for his less fortunate character shift. This image here is Homer three seasons into the show. His hair takes the M shape, which by the way is meant to be Matt Gronick's initials at one time. His head and eyes become rounder and bigger, his belly gets larger, and his appearance in general becomes more cartoony and oafish. And as the show would progress, these cartoony features would only become more pronounced. But while his design changes may have been for the better, it's his personality where things take a weirder turn. Oh, looks like young Simpson is going to kill himself. Well, maybe not. Maybe he's just taking his boulder for a walk. This is Homer's Odyssey, a season one episode that marks one of the first times Homer loses his job but things go differently than they would say now. There are consequences. After Homer becomes unemployed, his search for a job, while humorous, leads to less than desired results, and then suddenly, there's humanity in Homer. So much so that he tries to end his own life. Yes, it's dark, but it's meant to articulate Homer's natural human emotions. This original Homer is a very different man. He's inept, but he cares. He cares about his family, his intentions are almost always good, and he cares about his image. These things are important. Early Homer makes a lot of mistakes, but because he's rarely doing things to be mean-spirited or out of absurdity, we understand why Marge would stick around. He's dumb, but he shows flashes of intelligence. He isn't cartoonishly stupid, so we understand that he has enough self-awareness to care about what people think of him and try to be a member of society. And importantly, early seasons Homer has a heart, sometimes a big one. The show was more often focused on relatively happy endings and presenting Homer as a father that truly cared. His physical design, especially very early on, was a great, more human representation of this. Every once in a while, however rare, we the audience were okay with Homer thinking of himself as Max Power, as a hero. Despite his characteristically mean treatment of Bart, even early on. But, there was minutia under all this that would slowly fall apart. For example, this is Homer reading. Cosby's first law of intergenerational perversity. No matter what you tell your child to do, it will always do the opposite. As you're about to see, this one scene is very important. Far more important than it probably should be. So let me give you this. Oh, look, she's presenting. We thought this would take years to happen. <laughs> the Simpsons and Eternal turn Homer was built around a deconstruction of the family sitcom that dominated the decade prior. It was built almost as a satire of that happy nuclear household. It was meant to be a semi-real depiction of American families that we didn't see on TV. But by the sixth season, most of the show's original primary creative team were preoccupied with other projects, and The Simpsons was falling into new hands. There's a much-cited Slate article by Chris Ellentrope that points to this moment as the pinnacle of that foundation falling apart. This is Homer being... well, I, I don't know that it needs any explaining. Let's say he's being taken advantage of by this panda. It's one of the most hated scenes in Simpsons history, because this became the norm. Homer slowly became an irredeemable idiot, and we can pinpoint where this really began. A lot of the humor written for Homer after the first four seasons became about one-upping his stupidity. This was fine for a while, but the writers realized quickly they'd have to top each moment of stupidity to keep it funny. 
A.O. Scott once said that Simpsons creator Matt Groening's strength was using animation to address reality. But around season 8, the Simpsons writing staff kind of ballooned, and season 9 saw the tenures of Mike Scully and Ian Maxtone Graham. And The Simpsons absorbed itself. It lost sight of that realism, however exaggerated it was, and Homer would quickly fall apart in the world of the new Simpsons. The world of the cartoon. Scully would executive produce seasons 9 through 12, and Max Stone Graham would write, partially during this tenure. It was these three seasons where we'd meet this guy. Oh. 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 Boy, I'm feeling this. Oh. Ooh, my head's gonna be sore in the morning. Oh. Remember that scene with Homer reading? Well, to top Homer's stupidity, suddenly Homer was completely illiterate. Time? What's a game? And the decline was rapid from there. Homer would get dumber and dumber until he became a nearly functionless member of society, that illiteracy being a mark of a joke that changed who Homer was without much thought. He was always inept at his job, but now he was a caricature of himself. He no longer cared at all for how he was viewed by society, quickly becoming entirely self-obsessed. There also became no consequence for Homer's actions, and thus no emotional pull from Homer in any way, shape, or form. Originally, he was held responsible for things, and the episodes played out through Homer's reaction to those consequences. Suddenly, Homer could do whatever he wanted, get away with anything he wanted, and there was no emotional response or recognition of fault at all. But worst of all, in all the stupidity and self-obsession, he lost the heart that made his behavior funny. He became a malintentioned villain. As Slate put it, these endings very quickly turned into these. He was no longer a funny, well-reasoned representation of the American dad. He was himself a joke, an animated oaf. It got so bad that Dan Castellaneta, Homer's voice actor, ended up rejecting parts of scripts where Homer's mean-spirited, brazen new behavior got out of control. So how did we get here? Well, Scully's three-season run, 9 through 12, as producer marked the most dramatic change in Homer, as the bloated writing staff lost an appreciation for what the show was. Writer Max Tom Graham would say in an interview that he had hardly watched The Simpsons before joining the staff. He'd then go on to mock Matt Groening's writing rules, point to episodes without Matt's name as great, and say of fans, go figure, that's why they're on the internets and we're writing the show. At some point, probably around here, Groening's vision spiraled out of control. It was lost, as it was handed to people that didn't understand what the original intent was. And Homer suffered. He became the embodiment of Max Tone Graham's attitude. Intentionally or not, he became spiteful, harsh. His existence spit in the face of who Homer was. There's irony in Homer's rounder, softer character design, because as Homer got easier on the eyes, he became harder to listen to and in turn root for. This mark of seasons 9 through 12 was the most dramatic and obvious shift in the character yet. And still, Homer's stupidity after Scully's 12th season would only continue to become exaggerated. He continued to lose any semblance of relatability, he continued to become less of a character and more of a punchline. He lost his personality. He'd be an oaf when it was funny and then a sensational talent at a new job when the joke called for it. He'd be mean when it seemed cool and then a victim when it wasn't. He became a blank slate of stupidity with no voice to call his own. As Sam Simon once said, as the show got bigger and its writing staff ballooned, The Simpsons became this homogenized version of itself. And Homer is the best microcosmic example of this homogenization of ideas. Do not press the core destruct button. Press destruct button. Scully and the team's creation of Jerkass Homer, as fans have dubbed him, makes Scully's own episode, Homer to the Max, a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Even Homer doesn't want to be the guy that they turned him into. Even Homer knows that that guy isn't the one that people love. But this isn't all two people's fault. They just represent the problem. It's collaborative drain on personality and the character, as much as it's improved and fluctuated in quality since, and he has had better moments, never really recovered. Because Scully and Graham were just symptoms of a bigger issue. Maybe this is just what happens when your character lives for 30 years, when it loses its heart. Much like SpongeBob, Matt Groening's original vision for Homer in The Simpsons was pure. It wasn't watered down, it was self-assured and confident in itself. But as the creators begin to hand their vision to others, that vision becomes diluted. The brushstrokes stop flowing in one direction, it becomes messy. 
This is Homer Simpson. And this is an attempt to recreate that guy. This is Max Power. Yes, this is the original Homer Simpson. I wish. That's a wrap on today's episode of Nerdstalgia. Guys, if you enjoyed this one, press the like button down below. And as always, if you haven't yet done so, press subscribe so you don't miss anything I put out on this channel. As well as the little bell next to the subscribe button. That's just the notification bell. I just make sure you're actually notified when I upload, so hit the little bell too. As always, on your screen are two more episodes of Nerdstalgia. You can click on either of those to see what else I put out recently. And I'll see you guys in the next video.